All right, hello everyone. I just wanted to put this together um, to go over the uh, Cricut data and how you should be processing it. All right, so this is just hopefully a review for what we did in class so you guys know um, what to do with the data and have a, a reasonable idea of what it should look like. All right, so what I've got here is um, a set of data. And what you'll notice is that there are the first column is going to be time, and then the next five columns after that are going to be the individual sensors. Okay? Until we get to our temperature. So what we <clears throat> would like to do first is take and set these guys up in a little bit easier way to work. So I'm going to take all the data set twos. I'm going to do control X and move that down here, all right, control V, that moves. So what this is, is remember our first data set is going to be the room temperature. You can see 25 degrees-ish. Second set is going to be our high temperature, which we are at 36 around there. And then I'll take and put our low temperature, all right, which is here. So what we need to know is what we're more interested in than just the amount of CO2, because that we can start at different levels. What we're really interested in is um, the change in CO2 over time. So what we're going to need to do is for each sensor, and now that these are lined up, I can do this. I'm going to click up here, and I'm going to go ahead and insert two columns. All right. So I just right-click. You can Command-click, and I hit Insert. Twice. So now I've got two columns here. So the first one is just going to be the change all right the change in parts per million right because that's what this is measured in parts per million of CO2. Now well, because we did 60 minute intervals this automatically gives us the amount of CO2 per minute. So all we have to do is minus uh, the second one from the first one. So it would be equals this one, a minus sign, and then click on this one. All right, so that gives us that for this column. We can then click on the little cross down here and drag that down. All right, so that gives us our change in parts per million of CO2. Um, actually, this should say, that little slash is in the wrong place, it should say per minute. Right. So what we want, though, <coughs> is our um, parts per million of CO2 per minute per gram. All right, so this is where for each bottle, all right, so this, the one should be for bottle one. Remember, you recorded your weights for your crickets um, for each bottle. So here's what you would do. You would put in um, this number and then divide by, and you're going to type in the weight of the crickets in that particular bottle. So say 1.25 for this one. All right. The reason we're going to type those in is because when we copy this down, you'll notice that the 1.25 stays the same. All right. If we did C3 divided by, and you had your weights listed over here and you clicked on it, what it would do is it would adjust it down one each time and it would mess things up. So you've got to make sure you're typing that in. So this gives us the uh, parts per million of CO2 per minute per gram. Um, so what it's telling us is the amount of CO2 that's produced in a minute for each gram of cricket that was in there. Right. So this is adjusting for the fact that we have different weights of different crickets. And so we're also going to want a mean. PPM. Uh, CO2. Oops. All right, so the way we would do that is we would just go ahead and hit equals, click our average, 
Make sure their numbers are right. Through D3 through D7. That's good. All right. So that now gives us um, the mean for that. Um, so what we can do is we can now take this whole chunk here, go ahead and copy it, and paste it in to these two spots. All right. So that's figuring that out for us. Um, so we're going to end up going through for each individual. Um, ooh, what happened there? Uh, each individual probe and do the same thing. So insert two columns, but then over here we can go ahead and again just copy and paste in. the same formulas, right? So we don't have to do it over again. And so through the magic of editing, I will make it so that that happens very quickly. Okay, so now I've got this very long data set. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and insert another one here just so that I can now put down uh, temp. All right, so we're going to do a mean temperature for that whole run. So this would be, again, equal to average. Make sure it's the right ones. R20 through 25, okay. You can also highlight those. And then we can go ahead and copy and paste that for all three. All right, there we go. Now, we've got for... We've got a mean now for each probe. So what we would also like to have is a mean for, let's see, um, a mean for each temp. All right, so um, let's put it right here. A mean, PPM, CT, CO2 per minute. Uh, let's call this grand mean. All right, so this one would be for, we would have to do our uh, formula a little bit different for this one, since the averages, are, the numbers that we're averaging aren't all around each other. So we go ahead, start typing in average, we can double click on that. Um, and so what you have to do with this one is we'll go all the way over to the first one. We'll click on it, and then you put a comma, right? It's telling it that we're skipping some spaces until the next one. So we go and do all of our averages, all five of them, with commas in between, and that will give us the grand mean of the whole, for the whole temperature, right? So for the 25 degree temperature, our mean temp was about 25, That'll do it for all of those. Now we can go ahead again. We can copy, paste it in for each of these. All right. So for now, for 13 degrees, we had a grand mean of 15.77 parts per million per minute per gram. For the warm temp, 65.55 parts per million per gram. And for the cold temp, we had 22.72. Okay. Um, so the next thing we would like to do is we would like to visualize this, right? So it's, it's pretty evident that what we expected to happen happened, right? That, um, that the warmer they were, the higher their metabolism rate, right? The faster they were producing carbon dioxide and the colder they were, the uh, slower that their rate was. So let's set these up. Let's go with, I'll copy this. We'll do grand mean parts per million of CO2 per minute. Oop, that should be per gram. An extra slash in there that should not be there. There we go. Parts per million CO2 per minute per gram. Um, 
And so what we would just do is go ahead and um, copy this and then paste special. Hold on, I'm going to do the low temperature first. So just because it'll look better. So we are going to copy it, put it over here, and we're going to paste values. All right, so let's do the room temperature first. Copy. Okay, special. And then this one. Copy. So I did the wrong paste there and it gave me the wrong number. So you got to be careful of that. And then this is going to be mean temperature. So you can even just type these in because this is 27. What was the low one? 15.77. And then 25.5. Oh, mean temp was 13.68. All right, good job. You guys caught that. 13.68, and then our high temp was 35.74. Okay, so now we would like to visualize this. We're going to go ahead and um, highlight this. Now this is what's going to work. How it's going to work for a PC. It's a little bit different um, when you're using a Mac. And so, if you've got questions on that, just let me know. Um, the you're doing the same thing. It's just that the um, window that it shows you is a little bit different. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do this, and our chart comes up. Now, it's not looking the way we want it. So you've got two things. You can either click here or you can go to um, design and go to select data. And so we want to select the data. And so what we want is our horizontal category. Um, our horizontal access labels are going to be our temperatures, right? So we're going to go ahead and edit this. And so we're going to say that these are our horizontal axis. All right. I think it call in the Mac one it calls it the x-axis, and then we're gonna get unclick series two, and then um, we're gonna go ahead and hit edit. Um, and so we're gonna click on here for our series values, and we're gonna highlight this column. Let's make sure that that's clear. That and hit enter. Okay. All right. So now what you've got here is you've got your parts per million per minute per gram here. So the amount of CO2 they produced in a minute, um, your, or the average amount of CO2 they produced per minute per gram of cricket, and versus our three different temperatures. And you can see that uh, 13.68 was definitely lower than our 25.1, which is way lower than our 35. Uh, or a 36 degree, right? Um, I got a couple minutes left here. We can go ahead. Remember, we're going to get rid of the chart title. All right, so you can click on that. You can get rid of the series. And so we need axes labels. There's two ways to do it. If you've got this little plus sign, you can do it here. Or if you go back up to design, you can add chart element. All right, so you have to add your axis titles, primary horizontal, primary vertical. All right, so this one here. Let me click on it. It's going to be our parts per million of CO2 per minute per gram. And then this one is going to be our mean temp. Right, so mean temperature in Celsius. I remember you would have a description down underneath. 
All right, so that's how we would visualize our data. I'm also going to put together another video on how to do the statistics.